Hey everybody, just wanted to show you something I've been working on real quick. This is one of the windmills I've been working on. This is specifically number 20 that I've made. Um, and it's finally, I've gotten to a point where I feel like the design is working for me really well. This one uses flat blade propellers at a pitch of about 77 and a half degrees. Um, it's working pretty well. It does have everything set up inside it to be generating power. I just don't have uh, anywhere to be putting the power quite yet. So there you can see it in action. I'll get some better clips here in a second. And here it is in all its glory. You can see these uh, flat blades, you know, pitched here. I've got some writing on them just to make sure that they were balanced. I was weighing them. It's got, I believe this is either a two to one or a, or a 2.3 to one gear ratio. I can't quite remember. You can see the stepper motor kind of sandwich in there. Um, and then this is the powered gear. This is the drive gear. You've got two bearings. I, I found this system to work pretty well. I, I think I'll do another video later on uh, use just incorporating bearings into 3D prints because there were a couple things that I wish I had known earlier on. Um, I've got this really cool mounting system here that, I, that I, I think worked really well where you can't see it but there's this countersunk hex um, in right here in the body and then I've got these bolts that kind of span the entire length of the, uh, the windmill base and that's good because it, it gives it some rigidity as well as you can see it in here without it wobbling all over the place it gives me room to put on some extra attachments um, and that's nice because I'm always forgetting things like I didn't think of a way to, to put a vein on here but that little two, uh, that two bolt design left me some extra room to just slap one on this is obviously a work in progress um, but it works well enough for what we've got going on you can see over on this side there's a tensioner right here or at least that's what it was going to be for because I designed this to also be able to work with uh, GT2 timing belts or with polyurethane belts but I decided to go with gears just because this was such a, a simple ratio that I might as well just print some some chubby gears and put it on there that's about it for the design considerations one other thing that I, that I like about this one is if you print if you make these with enough of a a distance between the mounts I don't, I don't know how else to explain that um, but it's nice because you can fix it onto a shaft or onto a, a pole or something without having to actually clamp anything down and you know that's that's not going anywhere that's that's firmly affixed on there um, so so that's nice this bolt down here is just held on with some blue loctite I found loctite to be very helpful with these sort of projects for um, I'm really scared of permanence so there's all the, all the time. I mean, I'll, I'll go through great lengths just to save one bolt. So Loctite's good for that because if I decide that I want the bolt back, or the, the nut, I'm sorry, I can just, you know, get my heat gun out and I can salvage it. It doesn't look like there's any wind blowing right now, uh, but I'll just throw some, some clips of it working in the end here. Again, it's all set up so that there, it could be generating power. I'm waiting on uh, some boards that I ordered that I'm going to plug some rectifiers and you know, I'll, I'll get the electricity situation all sorted out. Um, but for as, as for now, that's, you know, it's ready. It just needs a couple more things. I want to redesign the vein, obviously. Um, and then everything else, I think I'll wait to go more into detail on in another video because there are a lot of things that I wish I had known going into this and I, I think will be very helpful to, to other people. So that's it for the explanation. Now enjoy these clips of it in action. Now that it's spinning, I remembered one more thing that I was going to say. People ask me all the time about how much power you can expect to get out of these. Um, with my previous designs, I was getting somewhere between 5 to 10 volts, uh, you know, maybe 25 to 50 milliamps. This one's quite a bit beefier in its peak spins. Well, not including peak. I'll, I'll say on average, um, you can probably get about a quarter to a half of a watt out of it, um, which is pretty beefy considering, you know, this is not that, that big of a setup here. Um, you know, and obviously you could, you could scale it up. There's a lot, there's a lot you could do. Um, and a lot I plan to do with this sort of design to hopefully increase the output and store it somewhere. I think it'll be really cool.